people and welcome to another episode of Dive Through. Today is a very special episode because we have a very special guest. Wow. So, who are you and why are you here? Hi everyone. Hi, nice to meet you all. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Alia and I'm Guinness friend. And so in the opening, you guys saw a really good performance of Wildflowers. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Can you tell us like just very shortly what, like, what's that song about? What's the message about it? What Powers is actually my experience of feeling imprisoned by trauma. Uh, in the past, I've had different types of trauma, different, different experiences with trauma. And if you want to know more about the details, you can just open my channel and read the lyrics word by word, sentence by sentence, and also there's like a narration of it in the description box of the music video as well. So yeah, the short version is, it's about being imprisoned by trauma, but the longer version, just check it out on my channel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember listening to it the first time I was still in Germany, and yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, like she really put her whole heart and soul into this, as well as the entire album, by the way, Congrats on your first EP. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, I can tell you put a lot of effort in it, especially yeah. because like you're an independent artist and you do like a lot of things yourself. Yeah. But before that, I think a little introduction on how I know you, which actually this is our first in-person meeting, right? Yeah, we usually just chat. And Over Instagram. Comment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. each other, hyping each other. Woo. Like my first, online presence of you is because you won Miss Indonesia 2018 and I was from batch 2017 but I didn't win, she did and you took a master's in the same university yes. I did yeah. so that's also another reason that I contacted you in the first place like oh my gosh you're in SGU, why? How? and then you start posting about your music, you yeah. release that and I think like it's very cool and inspirational how as an indie artist, you're really thriving and also with all the other things you're doing. So that's why I invited her here today so that she can also share her story and inspire you guys. So <laughs> can we start from the journey there? Because your first public appearance was Wajah Femina 2014. Or were you already active in like the entertainment and creative industry since before that? Well, more or less. I think if you ask about active as in working, mm -hmm. I've already worked, I think, or tried working since middle school, actually. Uh, I have requests by friends who want me to do illustrations mm. and stuff, and then uh, I charge a fee, which is mm. a very little fee, so that I can um, buy some more snacks on recess, <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. So art for snacks. Uh, art for snacks, <laughs> yeah, small stuff. Ooh. And at the same time in high school, that's also the time when uh, I took a modeling course. In that course, I was taught how to pose, how to mm. carry yourself, how to present yourself, how to catwalk, uh, a lot of stuff regarding modeling. And that's how I was um, exposed to um, castings fashion, mm. in fashion. Then again, uh, if you want to ask me about when did I start working, it all start from there. Mm. But if you ask about music, I, I can't really say when it's the exact start. Um, again, my first initial hobby is drawing and whenever I draw, I always listen to music. Uh, there was a period in my life where when I have to finish a drawing or a painting or, or like a commission drawing, I have to listen to my playlist and if I don't have the playlist on repeat, then I can't finish it. Sometimes oh. it's like that. And then actually in 2018 when I joined in Miss Indonesia competition, you remember in our competition there's a sub competition which is talent competition, right? Mm -hmm. So in talent, you remember that there's only three categories of performance, right? Either you sing, or you dance, or you play musical instrument, right? Mm -hmm. For Miss Indonesia, and drawing is not in any of those categories. Mm -hmm. Remember? Yeah. So that's how I thought out of the box and thinking, you know what, maybe I can combine singing while, while doing a live painting. That's like a quick painting. Mm. And then I did that performance and that's how the people inter in entertainment and in the Miss Indonesia uh, staff, I guess, realized that I, have, I might have potential and they started giving me vocal lessons. Oh. Yeah. It's like two sides of a coin and you have the heads and tails, right? Mm. And my coin is like, 
drawing and, and music, it's just like always there with me. <laughs> mm. I think it's also interesting how you really thought out of the box. Like, I don't think anyone has done a painting for like the talent. Yeah. And then I think when you went to Miss World, I think I saw a clip where you were doing like a musical thing. You were yes. painting on a dress. Can you tell us a bit about that? So uh, when I competed in Miss World, there's still a sub competition for talent. Mm -hmm. Another challenge is that how how can I focus on making the audience understand the message of the performance? Mm. I can't do a live painting again because uh, the audience would might might be distracted because that's that's what I learned from my previous performance in Miss Indonesia. Mm. I don't want the audience to get sidetracked from the initial message of the, the performance, right? Mm. So what I did was, after a lot of brainstorming with the whole team, we decided that I should just paint on the dress that I'm wearing. The dress that I wore at that time, I designed it with my friend, a designer, his name wow. is Wiki Wu, but it's just the cutting that we designed together. When Wiki gave it a dress, it's all blank, it's like a blank canvas, mm. and then we talk about what kind of painting that we should put in there mm. and then he watched me paint over the dress and then I put on the dress that's also when I uh, practiced singing in a musical style and I sang Good Morning Baltimore from the Broadway piece titled Hairspray mm -hmm. that's also one of my favorite musicals so I performed that using the dress that I drew on. Whoa. It was like a combination of things that I'm very, very interested in. And the message is about Indonesia. Mm -hmm. um, in Good Morning Baltimore, it's like a very, the, the message is very mm. positive. It's Good Morning Mal Baltimore, and it feels like I'm saying good morning to everyone. But the dress itself, it tells a story about Indonesia, how we uh, rise up after a lot of um, difficult times. At that time, in 2018, there's um, a lot of natural disasters, remember? Mm. Earthquakes and tsunami and liquefaction. I, I threw everything inside the dress. And then at the end of the performance, I opened the skirt because the skirt can be expanded. Mm. And then there's like a different painting inside as well. It's like a surprise move. Wow. And I just wanted to make sure that people understand the story of Indonesia over there. So it's kind of difficult, but then again, like I said, it's like two sides of a coin between music and, and drawing. It's like always there together. <laughs> and you combine fashion as well, because it's a pageant. Yeah. So that's... Yes, yeah, that's a bonus. <laughs> that's really, really cool. Okay, before we move on, I have a mini game. Yay! And I have my contekan. And I need the one minute timer. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a rapid fire round. It's new. I've never done this with any guests. So really? you're, you're my tester bunny. So it's called 2060, where it's 20 questions in 60 seconds. Okay. You have to answer as many as possible. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be the correct answers. You can okay. just like first thing you think about, or it's the, really the answer. But let's see how many questions you get through before the timer ends. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. One, two. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Favorite color? Orange. Zodiac. Aquarius. MBTI. INTP. Your pets? I have three cats now. Siblings? I have two younger brothers. Favorite food? Um, orange. Favorite season? Autumn. Go to pose? <laughs> Instruments you play? No. Current favorite song? Current favorite song? Any, any song from Jeff Buckley. Pose like your favorite emoji. Ah, <laughs> Pet peeve. I don't like it when uh, a, a random person or a stranger in front of me walks slower than me. Favorite city? Uh, maybe Bandung. Country you want to visit? Greece. A series you binged? Uh, American Horror Story. Favorite singer? Kareem Bailey Ray. Favorite K-pop group? BTS. K-pop bias? Ah! <laughs> okay, I am, I am. you got you got through 19 out of 20. Yay! That's okay. That's the record for now. You have the most answered questions. But now I'm still going to ask uh, 20, number okay. 20, because it's actually your favorite line from Paint Me. Favorite sentence would be, "I'm trying something new in the upward turn." Ooh! <laughs> explain that. Explain because that's a bit. That can mean a lot of things. Yeah. So yeah. what for you, what does it mean? I'm trying something new in the upward turn. It means that um, 
I'm in a bad place right now, but I can start seeing that things might change if I do something positive. So mm. I'm trying something new uh, that's different from the current situation mm. to make things more positive for me. That's my personal interpretation. I wrote that based on uh, the theory of stages of grief and there's like different stages of it. In one of the stages, the title is The Upward Turn, mm. which is really basically you're grieving but you start seeing situations where you can turn everything around. It doesn't mean that you, be, you can turn happy instantly, but at least you can see the possibilities that life can still go on. Would you say that Paint Me is then the main message is about those stages of grief? The whole EP actually is inspired by uh, my own experience on grieving, on depression, and also it's supported by the theory of stages of grief. And I just hope when people listen or maybe read the lyrics, they can realize that they're not alone on going through tough times mm -hmm. and there's still a light at the end of the tunnel if you can still carry on. It's not gonna uh, make all your problems disappear, but at least it can help you keep moving forward despite everything that's going on. So how you use music to express your art and stuff, you hope that your music can also help people cope with what they're going through and relate to the things that... Well, first and foremost, my, my intention with my music is just for my own self-expression mm, and it's okay. to help myself. Mm. It is a bonus for me if people can listen and also find it relatable for them. But I can't guarantee that everyone can relate to me mm. like again. Um, I'm just saying, in case someone else in this world feels similar to me, I'm just showing that here you go, I'm open for a connection. Mm. <laughs> I've been in a tough position where I question my identity and question whether should I draw this or not, whether should I really say what I want to say, but I'm overcoming that and uh, all of those I've summarized in the EP. So people listening should really pay attention to each line in the lyrics because they all mean something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the conspiracies and the The conspiracies. No. <laughs> I think it's interesting how Painty, like it's it's very upbeat, right? Yes. And there's even a dance to it, which I find really cool. Thank you. But actually there's like a deeper meaning behind that. Yeah. Um, another thing that I want to ask about is actually like the process of making the whole EP because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're an independent artist, you're not like, there's no label that's pushing you to a certain direction. Mm -hmm. You even edited the music video yourself. <laughs> you drew it frame by frame, which is just like... How, <laughs> how, how, how did you manage to like put everything together? Like how long did it take to make the whole EP? I started drafting the lyrics way back at around 2018 or 2019. Mm. Some of them started as just like a few lines of poetry where I just feel like, oh, I need to make something and I need to write down like my issues. And then <laughs> gradually, um, as time goes on, those scribbles, those churhat, <laughs> they turn into something even more art artistic. I keep looking back like past notes and then um, try to dig more like documentaries or speeches regarding the stuff that I went through to mm. find someone more experienced or, or more expert to, to relate to and then mm. to learn from and then eventually those notes, those churhat, those diary or journal entries became something even more positive for me mm. and so it took a really long time, five a years. Really, really long time, at least five years but that's only just the lyrics. Oh. I began. I began to uh, have the courage to really record, really take it seriously as a piece of song. Mm. One song first, one song at a time. I think around 2021. Oh. That's when I began to uh, ask my colleagues uh, about uh, whether if they're interested to collaborate with me mm. or to draft an EP. So like produce, music producers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they give input in terms of arrangements as well. Mm. They give input in terms of the genre and I do a lot of brainstorming with my friends. Also my vocal coach, he had a huge role on um, uh, revising the melodies and making sure mm. I don't hit a false note <laughs> <laughs> on recording. So um, it, it, it took a, a really long time and then even after 
all of that, all of the drafting and all the revisions, I still need to re-record some of the songs oh. because of technical issues. It's just like when you're shooting uh, an interview video or a, or a podcast for your channel, right? Sometimes you have to reshoot the video because it's just technical stuff and yeah. you gotta do it. it. Happened to me too. That's why it took a really long time, it took at least five years for me to make the wow. EP. <laughs> That's a lot of work behind that EP. Yeah, then. yeah. <laughs> and how, how about like the for Paint Me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why did you choose to like make a dance out uh -huh. of it? Because I really, really like dancing. The first time I fell in love with like, dancers and watching dance performances was when I saw Step Up, the movie. Mm. You, have you watched? I Step watched. Up? I think I've watched all of them, but like yeah. I like the three and four one. The ah, most. yeah, step up two and step up three is like the best. Nice. <laughs> they're they're like, oh, mm. legendary movies in my life. <laughs> and ever since step up, how it changed my life, and I I kept um, following these dancers on social media, looking at their creations, and then for years I was just so inspired and. Uh, not to the point of just consuming their works, but also to the point that Dancing I want to move through. Yeah, I want to learn like them, mm. and I want to apply what they've been inspiring me all these years. It's just a challenge to myself, and also back again to my favorite line in the song, which is trying something, something new, new in the upward turn. There's a lot of bad places that I've been in the past, and I need to really rack up, rack up my mind to make sure that I pay attention to the positive sides instead of the negative sides in my situation at that time. So doing the dance and um, reaching out to a choreographer to mm. make the dance for a song is a form of trying something new. That is very me. new. It's, yeah, it's trying something new in my life. It's just, you know, a positive challenge for me to make a positive outcome so that I can focus on those positive things in my life instead of negative things. <laughs> wow, but it's really cool that your like your coping mechanism or mm. your way of making your life better is very productive and it's artistic. <laughs> There's like the result, you know, that other people can also enjoy. So let's talk a bit more about what's next for you. So this is your first EP. I think you also had one, one or two singles before that. I had three singles. Three before singles the EP. before that. Yes. And so what's next? Do you want to make music like your career, or is it just your personal expression, or? What do you think? Uh, I'm not gonna limit myself into like in, a, in one box or one category. I'm just gonna keep going, um, doing what I do uh, as in my work, in my line of work as a presenter, as a host. I just want to keep earning money so that a side of that money I can allocate it into art. Wow. <laughs> I just know that as long as I live, I have to make art because wow. that's how I balance myself my heart, my mind, my activities. That's how I practice like uh, my own type of, um, what's the word? My own type of meditation, I guess. <laughs> what are some hopes for yourself, for, for your own like personal character? Or it can also be like goals, like you want to do this like in the next five years, let's say. First of all, maybe I can divide it into different categories. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the category of music, hopefully within 2024, I can focus more on uh, being in song collaborations. Mm -hmm. For example, being a co-writer mm -hmm. or write a full song for a different musician or maybe being featured in a track. I would love to be in a lot of collaboration because I want to stack up, I guess. Mm. I want to have more experience than that. For the category of maybe self-development, I want to be a better caretaker for my pets. <laughs> for your pets? <laughs> for my pets. Cat mom. <laughs> yeah, because, well, in the past few years, starting from 2020, I've been, um, rescuing cats and then mm. for the cats that I succeeded on rescuing um, I've also advertised to my friends please adopt them oh. and open adoption and stuff and it, it was a success and then but then again you know um, sometimes things happen and then sometimes the cats they get diseases and stuff and things are out of my control and I just get sad if I can't save them all because mm. 
They're just cats. They don't know anything. <laughs> Not even a month ago, one of the house cats in my house passed away oh. from a complication between um, um, kidney infection and then maybe something genetic as well. But it, it was a really huge um, grieving moment for my family because we really, we really, really love that cat. His name is his name was Abun. <laughs> Abun. Abun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just so round and fluffy, and he's an orange cat. <laughs> oh, you know, the, you know the stereotype that orange cats are just so strange and funny. Yeah, Abun was just so funny, and I really miss Abun. And I, I just don't want my cats to go that fast. My other cats to go mm. that fast. You know, I still love them, and I want to. Oh, <laughs> you know, I just don't want to lose more cats. So your personal <laughs> development goals is to be a better caretaker for your cats. for for my pets, a better cat mom. Very careful. Yeah, mom. and hopefully, if something happens, I can be, you know, more, more a class. What's it? What is it in English? S sincere? No. No. E class? You know, more. This is e class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If something happens, well, I hope I don't get too sad too long and just, hmm. you know, understand that sometimes things are out of my control. Yeah. But, but yeah, I'm still grieving because I miss oh. Abun. I will send you pictures of Abun, funny pictures, so okay. maybe the audience can see. This is Abun, this is Abun, this is Abun, please pray for Abun. Abun is in <laughs> cat heaven right now. Yeah. <laughs> Ending remarks for the people watching. One or two sentences. To anyone who is watching, if you feel like you need help, you need professional help, then please do. Please reach out to people, please reach out to your family, to your trusted friends. Um, if you want counseling, there's always online counseling. You need to keep looking up and trust yourself, trust on your um, commitment to have better mental health because it's very important. The more you delay getting help for yourself, um, the more problems will occur in mm. the future. So when you realize you need help, please seek help. Please yes. go seek help. That's very important for me. And then, um, Another thing that I want to say to the audience is that thank you so much for listening, for taking time and for having interest in clicking in this video and saying hi to me and saying hi to Gene. I hi. really, really appreciate it. If you want to know more about the stuff that I do, you can look at my Instagram at alia.chabrina. You can look at some of my sketches and artworks at um, my art Instagram as well. It's in my bio. and. You can check out some other stuff that I do, like the behind the scenes, like you said, mm. and then the music videos in my YouTube channel at alia.mp4. Nice. <laughs> yeah, please check them out. Please subscribe and leave a comment if you can. Um, maybe you can even say, hey, I came here from Guinness this channel, video. From this video. <laughs> say <Yeah>. Abun. <laughs> say Abun. <laughs> or Orange Cat. That's that's the code name. Oh, to yeah, say Orange not. Cat. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you comment Orange Cat in my channel, we will I know. know. I know, I would know that oh, you came okay. from here. <laughs> Cute. Okay. Cute. Then let's wrap this up. Thank you so yes. much for sharing your story. And we will now listen to the acoustic rendition of Paint Me. Paint Me. Bye. Bye bye.